Hello and welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic. It is me again. Uh, apparently, there weren't all that many complaints last week about me doing it. Uh, and so I've been allowed back, which is great because uh, I enjoy doing it. And it's also stopping me going completely stir crazy sitting in my own living room. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with the format, effectively, I'll be answering your tech questions. And so in order for this format to work, I need your tech questions. So either stick them in the comments section or ask us on social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Now, fortunately, we have loads of cracking questions this week, so I'm going to go straight on with the first one, which comes in from John Daly. I've got, or can I put a Shimano 105 crankset on my 2017 Giant Contend 3, which has actually got a Shimano 8-speed Claris group set on there? Now, there's an awful lot of difficulties <clears throat> with mixing and matching group sets of different speeds, different eras, and so on and so forth. But actually chain sets, I believe, are generally okay. As long as it's gonna fit your frame and your you get the right bottom bracket standard for it, uh, which in itself is a bit of a minefield, yes, it should work. Now Shimano, I'm sure, will say it doesn't work because it doesn't work to their standards, but I suspect that you can get an eight-speed chain to work on an 11-speed chain set quite happily. And the one thing that you must, must check as well though is that you are, kind of goes without saying, swapping uh, a double chain set, so two chain rings, uh, with another one with two chain rings as opposed to a triple, because then that won't work, and that will be the fault of your shifter uh, up front. Um, so yeah, should be absolutely fine, um, but yeah, you kind of, you maybe want to think about why you're changing your cranks. I guess you can save quite a bit of weight through cranks, and often they look quite a bit better. Uh, but still, make sure that that's the primo upgrade for your budget, um, because, because yeah, you don't want to start unlocking Pandora's box by replacing bits of group set at a time. Um, particularly uh, because as your chain wears out, it will wear out your sprockets at the back and also your chain rings up front. So if you're swapping, uh, old cranks and chain rings for new chain rings, you might find that actually the compatibility issue comes with your chain that you then have to replace and then you've got to replace your cassette as well. So yeah, go go steady, but you should be absolutely fine. Uh, next up, I've got this from Harry McDonald. Um, I've got a Specialized Alley, uh, and I was thinking about upgrading from Shimano Claris to 105. Uh, I will have to upgrade my wheels as well. Is it possible to convert a rim brake frame to disc brakes? Uh, no, unfortunately, it's not. Unless technically you've got a steel frame, at which point you could potentially weld on uh, the disc brake tabs on the forks and on the chain stays. But you'll find that disc brake frames are not just fitted with the actual uh, mounts that you can put the disc calipers on, but they're also reinforced as well, because obviously frames aren't normally designed to take extra stresses and load at those particular points on, on the frame and the forks. Um, so no. Uh, you can't put uh, put disc brakes on, I'm afraid. But uh, a cracking pair of rim brakes and you'll be absolutely fine. Still a great tech. Now then, uh, Gerard Drager uh, has said, um, I've got Ultegra Di2 um, and my front derailleur is broken. The little arm which moves the derailleur up and down snapped. The motor is still intact and works. This arm seems to be made of aluminium. I didn't have any crashes, it just snapped. Now I'm thinking of upgrading that front derailleur to Durace. I learned that it's possible to mix Ultegra and Durace. Uh, do, uh, is it made of a more durable material? Um, well, I think um, there's no difference in durability between Ultegra and Durace. Um, I would imagine uh, five years of use, that's, that's pretty good going. I think it's probably just one of those things. And it might be that it's nothing to do with the crash, it's either just fatigue or, or maybe the derailleur's got knocked in transit or something like that. Um, but no, generally, uh, Ultegra and Durace uh, both last as long as each other. Um, yeah, basically, uh, in a nutshell. So, um, so yeah, the Durace ones tend to be a little bit lighter. That's, that's the prime difference between those two group sets. And then when new tech is introduced, it tends to be introduced at Durace level and then trickles down, of course. Uh, right, we got this one from Will Burton. Uh, how do I remove a rounded stem-faced bolt? Uh, I'm tired of saying I've got an integrated bar set up when my poor maintenance actually caused this cock-up. 
Uh, that's a tricky one. You do get all sorts of implements um, to help remove uh, rounded bolts. Uh, I know this only because <clears throat> I might have done the same and I took it to a bike shop uh, to get fixed. Um, but ultimately what they might end up having to do is actually just drill out the bolt uh, and then reface the threads as well. So, uh, so I would definitely leave this one to the professionals uh, unless you're willing to potentially sacrifice your stem, uh, which yeah. I mean, to be fair, I guess you might end up spending more at a bike shop than you would on replacing stem. Stems are one of those things that can often be quite cheap, yet still be really good. Um, so I'll leave that one with you, uh, but I personally wouldn't do it at home. Now, uh, we got this one in from Stan Lu. Um, I'm running a Shimano R8000 group set with a 50-34 chain set and an 11-30 to cassette. Ooh, are we gonna talk about gear ratio, Stan? Yes, please. Uh, they're in my day-to-day -day riding, I rarely use the 11 and I rarely even use the 12 tooth. I was wondering, is there any way I can change the 50 tooth chain ring to a 46 or a 48, keeping the small 34 ring, that way I can further compress the range of gear ratios while setting the chain more straight when I ride. Well, in answer to your question, yes, you can replace the 50 with 48 or a 46. Um, I don't know whether Shimano do a 48 or a 46 for uh, the R8000, so you might have to get an aftermarket one, um, which brings with it, again, Shimano would say it wouldn't be compatible, um, but many people do run them. But in terms of it compressing your gear range, yes, it will. But then your point about setting the chain more straight. Now that isn't gonna be the case because if you obviously make your front chain ring smaller, then you are more likely to ride in your 11 tooth and your 12 tooth, which is doing the exact opposite. Um, 11 tooth sprockets are not as efficient as 12 tooth sprockets because the chain has to bend in a more tight, uh, in a tighter curve, which adds a bit of resistance. So actually, if you want to make your drivetrain more efficient, then leave your 50 tooth on there and then simply don't use your 11 or your 12. However, if you do want to spend more time in your large chain ring, because it is more efficient being a big chain ring compared to a little chain ring, then yeah, fully go for a 46. Uh, cruising around in a 46 actually is pretty nice in most road situations. I used to do that with my cyclocross bike, which had 39, 46 chain rings on back in the day. Uh, and it always felt very nice actually. Um, so yeah, Potentially go for it, but just have a think about your logic. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we've got a video on that, I think, somewhere. Right then, next up, we got this one from Major Swags. Wow, cool name, Major Swags. Um, I am considering a new set of carbon wheels uh, around the, uh, hang on a minute, I'm not sure what currency that is, uh, around the thousand pound mark, so thousand euros, thousand dollars. At the top of my list, is either a Mavic Comet Carbon Pro or a Cosmic Carbon Pro, both of the same price in his local bike shop. The Comets are 64 mil deep and weigh 1,800 grams, and the Cosmics are 45 mil deep and weigh 1,600 grams. So he's asking, what are the better set of all-round wheels? Well, definitely the Cosmics. So those are the 45 mil deep, and I say that and I say that unhesitatingly because with deeper section wheels, yes, they weigh a little bit more, um, which in certain situations on long climbs or really steep climbs, they will uh, be slightly less efficient to ride on. Uh, Ollie did that experiment not so long ago, actually, um, where he tested exactly that. But it's actually less about the weight and more about wind. So a deeper section wheel occasionally in really strong winds won't be quite as stable as a shallower wheel. And so I'd go for the shallower version because they're still super aero, even if they're not quite as aero, they will feel ever so slightly more responsive because they're ever so slightly lighter, but there will be no wind conditions where you could not use them. So you could basically just run them all year round and they'd be an absolute banging set of wheels. Right then, 
Uh, moving on, uh, Fionn Malin, can you patch a latex tube? Uh, no, I don't believe you can patch a latex tube. Um, it is one of the disadvantages in that if you do get a flat on latex, uh, I think it goes straight in the bin. Uh, and I think that's because of the properties of the rubber, um, which means that, uh, yeah, it doesn't like being patched up. Um, then last one, uh, David Arrigo, uh, I'm sure this question has been asked before, uh, but you said to keep the questions coming. What would you recommend as the most essential tools to have in your home workshop for bike maintenance? Wow. Uh, ooh, that's a good question. I would definitely, definitely invest in a really, really good quality set of Allen keys, hex keys, and they need to go right through from one and a half mil up to 10 mil. Um, nice ball ended ones. They are worth their weight in gold because they're the tools that you have to use most. I hate Torx keys, but manufacturers insist on specking them. Uh, so I'd also invest in a really, really good set of Torx keys. Um, and then I would make sure I had a really good chain splitter, uh, cable cutters. So even in the age of disc brakes uh, and electronic group sets, I still find a set of cable cutters super useful. And then, oh, what other tools do I use all the time? Got it. A cassette tool and chain whip, um, because I don't know why, I always seem to be removing cassettes and replacing them with new ones or swapping them onto different sets of wheels. So I definitely, definitely get those. And also, uh, Cassette tools can often remove your disc rotors as well, often but not always. Uh, and then the last thing, controversially perhaps, I'd go for a hammer. Not because I think you should fix things by whacking them with hammers, but uh, Park do a really nice plastic faced hammer uh, with a rubber mallet on the other end because there are an awful lot of occasions like uh, removing uh, cranks from bottom brackets or tapping steerer tubes, that kind of thing, where actually you need a tiny little bit of force, uh, but not uh, wanting a kind of metal faced hammer to actually do any damage. So, uh, so a kind of soft tap. Um, so a little bit weird that one maybe, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, I'd go for a, a plastic faced mallet as well. And then uh, actually I said that that was the last question. I lied, I missed one out and I didn't want to miss it out because it's a great question. Uh, from Morton Harning Jensen, what is the best endurance upgrade that you can give your bike ahead of your first 100 mile ride? Uh, he suggested A, double wrap handlebars, B, wider tires, C, a new seat post with suspension or flex, and if C, which one would you recommend? Uh, well, I'd go for B, but not necessarily for the reason you're thinking. So although wider tires will give you a little bit more comfort, but actually I'd be more worried or I'd be more excited at the prospect of actually upgrading the bike so that it rolls faster, so I cover my 100 miles more easily. So wider tires uh, typically have less rolling resistance than uh, narrower tires, so that's a bonus. The fact that you can run slightly lower pressure will mean uh, that you roll more efficiently over slightly rougher surfaces, so rough tarmac and things. But also, I take the opportunity to invest in a really fast rolling set of tyres, so your rolling resistance decreases further, and then if you can stretch to it, I'd stick a set of latex inner tubes in there if you're not going to be running them tubeless, because they too will help you roll faster. And so, at the end of the day, your endurance upgrade that you're putting on there to give you more comfort may well save you in excess of 15 watts. Oh yeah, so, uh, so basically, you're kind of cheating because your 100 miles is actually equivalent of about 98 miles instead. Um, so, uh, so yeah, bear that one in mind. Um, I do find like flexi seat posts quite comfy um, and I do find double wrap bars can make a bit of a difference, but actually the road buzz that you can effectively cancel out by having a slightly softer pair of tires will do, in my opinion, far more than double wrap bars and a comfy seat post. Uh, so there we go. Right, that brings us to the end of the GCN Tech Clinic for this week. It feels like it's gone in a flash. 
but I've got to wait another week now. Uh, and not only that, uh, I've also then got to try and do it again next week as well, wrestle it off uh, my other fellow presenters. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it again this week. Uh, no sign of Albert. Um, he's obviously uh, quite happy playing somewhere else. Um, and yes, remember as well, the format only works with your questions. So please stick them in the comments section down below or use the hashtag AskGCNTech on your favourite form of social media.